Hey party people, BQ here. Thanks for swinging by the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. Please hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here at the channel. Usually I give you a little snazzy intro and everything, but to be totally honest with you, I'm pretty crunched on time. Pretty crazy everything going on with me right now. I'm with uh, you know, I'm taking a course in the military, so I'm in Texas right now. And I do that all day. I come home, study a couple hours, then I gotta do my college homework for about an hour. Fit the gym in, dinner and all that. Uh, video, you know, video chatting with the with the family. So it's you know the YouTube channel kind of taking a back seat. But I did want to talk about Rockstar Spud. So Rockstar Spud has recently requested his release from Impact Wrestling to no ill will. It was a business decision that he made, and uh, he requested it and was granted. Now there's a new regime in town, and a lot of people wanted Dixie Carter's head on a plate. And we pretty much got that. But when that happens, there's going to be changes. And, you know, it, it's kind of like in sports. People want the coach fire. They want a new GM. And then you bring on a new coach, a new GM. And they start getting rid of players. Or they start benching players. Or they start playing players that you don't really want to see. And that's just the nature of the beast. There's a new regime. And we got to live with what they're doing creatively. So I think with Spud, a lot of people... Are probably probably they're probably pretty disappointed by this. We didn't really get that last serious run with him, and you know he didn't do a whole lot serious to be honest. But I think a lot of us wanted to see something um, of some substance before it was all said and done with him. Uh, I thought the one missed opportunity there was a couple actually, but when he was uh, when they were teamed up with Matt Hardy, you know him and Tyrus, and they broke off. I thought there was some steam with them as a tag team because the. The division was so shallow at the time. Um, and they did wrestle once as a tag team against a bromance for a number one contendership. I mean, that's how shallow the division was. But, that you know, that was a time where they could have tried to run with them a little bit. And then, uh, you know, with the whole Hornswoggle feud, which was the last thing we got, it turned into a comedy act. But at first, you know, uh, when he was the ring announcer and he pants them, Swoggle kind of came back. It looked like he was going to go a dark route, spud my baby face turn. And then they, they kind of went back to what was safe. And it was the comedy angle with them. And even though the, the vignettes and everything that spud did was actually very funny. You know, they kind of went back to something that kind of been there, done that. And that was the last time we were, I think it was the last time we saw spud on TV. I have to believe, though, for the company, you know, flying him from the UK for the tapings. It's they probably... You know, you, you probably didn't have to um, twist their arm too much to get out of the Spud deal. But, you know, I think Spud finds plenty of work in the UK. I saw that uh, that there's WWE interest in him for 205 Live or the, the if they do a UK show. I don't know if I see that fit necessarily. Um, but, I mean, I, I think that 205 Live is kind of going back to the more gimmicky wrestling than cruiserweight wrestling, if I'm not mistaken. Someone will have to let me know. But, um, you know, Spud did a lot of good work with, with Dixie and EC3. And, you know, I thought, I think that's something that's missing from EC3's current heel run is that sidekick. You know, maybe partner him back up with Spud. See if they get some of that magic back. Um, you know, they had that hair versus hair feud or match, which was great. And that was the one time where Spud probably could have won the world championship and people would have been okay with it. And it's tough to get someone of his stature over to that point. But it didn't work out for him. Um, but I thought that I thought that could have worked, and you know he was last paired with Aaron Rex, and uh, even though I kind of liked the Aaron Rex gimmick, it was very short lived. And then at that point, it's kind of like, what do you do with this guy? You know, he was the ring announcer for a little while, and I, I thought he was a jack of all trades. He was a glue guy. Like they could have put him in a lot of different scenarios, and I, don't, I guess maybe he didn't fit the current X Division mold. But he was doing that amnesia gimmick on Twitter, which was kind of interesting. And he was factoring Impact Wrestling into it. It wasn't like he was going rogue. And uh, he's such a creative guy, entertaining guy, funny guy. It would have been cool to see where that went. But it almost looks like, it almost felt like that kind of gimmick has no place in the current show. It looks like by this next set of tapings, it's probably going to be a little more wrestling related. Um, less less uh, creatively. So I want to know what you guys think about Spud. If you think he's going to you know, end up elsewhere or just kind of remain in the UK or whatever. Um, 
I, I don't know that he's necessarily the E type. And then based off interviews with him, it didn't really sound like that was something on his radar. Uh, but but it could happen, you know, if it does good for him. But uh, you know, obviously there was no there was nothing for him with the company. I think they could have found something for him, you know, if I'm being honest with you. But he's gone. Another one bites the dust. Please hit subscribe if you're a first time visitor. And let me know in the comments what you're thinking about Rockstar Spud. Thanks for swinging by. Peace.